Okay, so get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Drupal 101. So uh, this will, this will, we'll just cover uh, an introduction to what Drupal is and what the basic terminology in Drupal and how Drupal works. So um, it, we'll try and make it as interactive as possible because I don't know where you guys are in terms of your Drupal experience. If you've used Drupal before, if you've never heard of it, if your boss says you have to go to Drupal camp, it's free training. Um, so uh, if you have any questions or you want to know anything specific, just, uh, just put up your hand or yell at me or something and, uh, and we'll talk about it. All right, so we'll get started. So before we talk really about Drupal, we'll talk about content management and what it is and why you want it. So traditionally, if you just have a website that's a bunch of HTML pages, you have something that looks like this, sort of just static content. For every URL, you have the file that is backing that URL that is served to, um, to present that page, and it's all very, very straightforward. But you end up with a bit of a problem when you want to do things more in a more complex way. What if you want to include content from other pages onto a single page? or make some sort of summary or list of things. Uh, if you have a static site, this can be very difficult to do and organize. So one of the solutions is to have a content management system, which is just a, a separate database uh, for your content. Uh, and then your content management system takes in URLs, figures out how to satisfy those and what content the person is looking for, uh, and then delivers them. So there aren't really any fixed URL for any fixed piece of content. You ask for something, and then the content management figures out what it is, or what, how, to solve, how to resolve that. So here's an example of a content management system with some content in it. It has different kinds of content. It has four pieces of content uh, with some information about it. So there's content one, the newsletter, Content two, which is an event. Content three, which is another newsletter. Content four, which is another event. And then the user via URL can ask for, I'd like content one. And then the content management system will, will serve out that particular piece of content. And so you don't really need a, a mapping of URL to one piece of content. You can do things more, you can have do more complex things. Uh, it lets you right away do lists of things. Give me all your events. The content management system knows what pieces of contents are events, so it can return all the events to the user. Um, the other thing that we can do with, with Drupal is we can set up a content model. So we can model different kinds of content that the content management system stores. Uh, in Drupal, we call these content types. So we can have two different sets of things. I sort of hinted that we had this before in our content management system. We can have something that we're going to define called a newsletter, which has a title, so the newsletter body, body the authors, and some, or the title, which newsletter it belongs to, some authors, and then the text of the newsletter. And we have something very, very different, which is an event, which has a title, uh, a start time, and an end time, and then the same sort of body of text. But we have these pieces of content in our system, but we have, a, we have structure for them. We have a model for, for how to use these things. The other thing we can generally do in content management systems is we can uh, tag and organize our pieces of content. Uh, in Drupal, we use taxonomies to do this. Um, we can have multiple vocabularies of terms in Drupal, and we can use them differently. So we can use them to tag things, dynamically, to, to, so when we're creating content, we can write what kind of content it is, or we can have sort of a fixed taxonomy for things. All right, I know Drupal Camp Ottawa is starting. There we are. So uh, if we have stuff for Drupal Camp Ottawa, we have different kinds of content. The different kinds of content in our content management system have different types. Uh, and then all these contents could belong to different tracks of the presentation. So we have a, a UX track, a code track, and a, and a business management track. 
So you can say content one is a newsletter post, but we're saying it's part of the code track. And content two is an event, and it's part of the management track. So we can tag things, and then that lets us make even more complicated queries to our content management system to have a user ask, can I see things about management? And then have it automatically return the first, in se first event and second newsletter. All right, so that's a bit about, that's enough about content management. So we'll talk about specifically Drupal. Is there any questions anyone has? No? All right. So Drupal is a free open source content management framework, as it likes to be called. Long, long ago, it's a slogan used to be community plumbing. Um, it's an extendable platform. So by itself, you can't really, it doesn't really deploy to much out of the box. It's a platform really to build a content management system with, or to build your specific content management system. Uh, from the technical side, it's completely written in PHP with some JavaScript, and you need a database in the back end, and that's generally a MySQL or MariaDB. So Drupal history, uh, the project itself started as just some bulletin board software. Um, in 2000 by uh, Dries Barakis, name is probably mispronouncing, um, and it, the community has, uh, has slowly grown to be quite big as um, different organizations have been formed to sort of manage um, the community around Drupal. Uh, and eventually the Drupal Association was formed and they, uh, they, they manage the, the code, the, uh, they manage the uh, supporting infrastructure for the open source project and plan the uh, events like DrupalCon. So about Drupal itself, uh, the focus of using Drupal is so that you can create most of your content management site, or most of your content management system rather, in the, in the GUI, that you can configure it like that. Um, Unfortunately, because it's got so many features, if you're very new to it, it, has, it can feel quite overwhelming when you log in with that admin account and you have a million links to click on. Um, most of the features in Drupal are written to be generic because you can kind of configure this thing to do whatever specifically you need it to do. Um, I, the, basically out of the box, it sort of has a minimum fe minimal feature set. So you add in the functionality that you need um, and it's designed to be very modular. It has, uh, you, can, you can change with, by adding or writing your own custom modules, you can change the way pretty much everything happens in Drupal so that you don't have to change the core, core code base of Drupal uh, at all, or ideally you don't. And so that way, one of the benefits of using Drupal is that you can really customize it, add in all of your custom, custom functionality and code, but you retain an upgrade path because you haven't actually had to change the code of Drupal itself. A bit, diving a bit more into modules inside of Drupal, um, there's sort of two classifications of modules if you're downloading uh, your own. Um, the first is core, which is all the things that come with Drupal itself. Uh, so the core modules and all the features that you get just with Drupal. And then the, the second sort of grouping of modules are contrib. So they're the contributed modules that people have posted on Drupal.org. So if you use Drupal.org, it has lists and lists and lists and lists of modules for doing all kinds of things. Um, those are just committed by people who use Drupal um, who wanted to share their work. All right, so let's take a look at what Drupal looks like. How many people have used Drupal before? Every, well, not everybody. Most people. Oh, okay. So no surprises here for, uh, for most people. I should have started this before, but that's okay. All right, so when you first install Drupal, you end up with a page that looks like this, the standard Drupal theme, let's zoom in a bit, uh, and some admin credentials to get in.
All right, once you're inside, you have, as the administrator, you have lots and lots of options to be able to do things. Um, across the top, you have uh, the, the main uh, menu elements for managing your Drupal site. Um, uh, it just says what they are. Uh, content, structure, appearance, extend, configuration, people, and reports. Content in that section, that's where you go to review the content that's been created in your Drupal site. Uh, structure uh, is where you go to modify um, how content is stored in your Drupal site. So if you want to create content types or taxonomies, that's all under structure. That's how the content is structured. Uh, appearance has to do with how things render. So if you want to change the theme, um, that is where, all, where the theme settings are. Uh, extend is where you can uh, select which modules are enabled. So Drupal can support all kinds of modules. You can download new ones to turn modules on and off to get different functionality. You do that from the extend menu. Uh, configuration is where all the global configuration options for Drupal are. Uh, so if there's anything that, it, that you want to change that affects the Drupal site as a whole, not as sort of a specific structure of it, uh, it's going to be under configuration. Configuration also tends to be the catch-all for config in Drupal. So uh, that one is quite the menu. You can take a look at it. People is for user management. So uh, Drupal as a content management system comes with an entire system to let you manage users and user accounts. Um, and it's all built in for you. And then reports are where sort of logs and all the Drupal status reports end up. Um, so as different events occur, Drupal logs it. Uh, you can control how Drupal logs it specifically, but you can also review the log from reports. All right. So let's talk a bit about and get into some Drupal terminology about using Drupal to actually create a content man or to, to use Drupal's content management. So the first and most important thing are, uh, in Drupal are what Drupal internally calls nodes, but in the menu calls content. And that's uh, the baseline thing that Drupal uses to store content, um, are nodes. You can set up different content types or node types that have your different models for the different kinds of content that your site wants to store. Um, nodes come with a whole bunch of built-in features. Uh, they record authoring information. Um, they have view pages, so each one of them automatically gets their own page that they'll render on, which is convenient if you just want to use Drupal as a very basic content management system. There's still sort of uh, an analogy to a static site where you, for every node you have a page and a URL that goes to it. Um, they also have a whole bunch of publishing options, so they have they have flags for whether or not this is sticky, whether or not that it's promoted to front page, um, which really can do, you can do with what you, whatever you want, depending on how you want to structure your site, but they're sort of there built in. Um, no, nodes can also be published and unpublished, so different permissions apply to them when they're unpublished versus when they're published. And, uh, and nodes can have comments attached to them. Well, anything can have comments attached to them, really, but anyways. Uh, another structure Drupal has for, for um, storing content are comments. Um, so comments are pieces of content, like other things in Drupal, except for they have built-in functionality to be threaded, so they can organize, you can organize them as con in conversations, and they have a moderation system, which nodes don't. We talked a bit about tagging and taxonomies. Drupal system for building that are, is our taxonomies and terms. You can set up different taxonomy vocabularies that have different terms in them. The vocabularies can be set to have different behaviors. So if you wanted a vocabulary that was just a set taxonomy, so it has only set options, so you want to make present the user who's editing content with a drop down box of things they can select about the content they're creating. You can set that up, or you can set it up to be dynamic, so as the user, uh, so it works like tagging, so as the user is creating content, 
they can create new terms as they're creating new pieces of content. Um, Drupal has a block system to control the layout. So on top of, so of nodes being content, you can have custom pieces of content that you can just position somewhere in the site um, and then control how it shows up. So under which conditions this piece of content shows up. And it's, they're really for, it's really a kind of content for things that go in the layout. Users are also content in Drupal, um, which is sort of important to remember. Um, but users store their own bit of information, like your passwords and, well, hashes of their passwords and the email address and, uh, and sort of other information, uh, and then what roles they have so that you can uh, give them permission. Uh, files are also content. Um, files as content is just to store the metadata about those files. So if you have images, you want to store perhaps um, the alt text for the image, um, or some other, some other metadata about it. Uh, you can also have menus, which is another pieces of content, which you use to build uh, well, menus and menu items to, let, to guide people around your site. All right, so those are sort of all the, the, the sort of high level con kinds of content that you can create with, with Drupal. Um, but to really leverage them, uh, you need to be able to put data on it. And the, the way to, to sort of attach data onto pieces of content is with fields, or are with fields. So fields are how you actually store specific kinds of data onto content, and how you configure that onto the different pieces of content. Um, so all the content in Drupal is fieldable, so that means users, comments, nodes, um, they can all have fields attached to them. So if you want to have a user and you say on my site, my user has a, a first name field and a last name field and an address field, you can add that right onto your user. Um, and if you have different kinds of node types, you can sort of add different fields to those node types. When creating fields in Drupal, uh, there are sort of four important concepts to, to think about, that they're not too complicated, but fields have a type, they have a cardinality, uh, they have a widget, and they have a formatter. That's a link. Um, is it some sort of number? Is it text? Is it just plain text? Or is it formatted text? Um, they could also be lists of things, or it could be a reference to a whole other uh, piece of content. The cardinality is how many, how many, uh, how the number of allowed values you're going to have for that field. So when you're creating content and you add a field to it, do you want the user to put in two of these? Uh, do you want them to only have one? So an example would be you have content, it has one title, but it has as many authors as you want. You can just add authors to it. So the title has a cardinality of one, and then the authors field would have an unlimited cardinality. The widget is the editing interface for that field. So you can control how you want to present people creating data for it, how you present uh, the form controls for people creating that content. So if you have a uh, a reference to another entity as a, as a field, do you want to offer an autocomplete field? Or do you want to offer radio buttons? Or do you want to offer a checklist? Or do you want to offer a select box? The widget is just uh, with how that form control looks. Hey. Yep. I, I have never tried this before, but can you put placeholders in the fields as well? Yes. So depending on the, the, the kind of field. And that, that's controlled by the, yeah. See, we'll, we can look at that if we have time. We, don't have a whole lot of time, but yeah. Yes, you can for, for most of okay. them. Uh, the inverse of a, of a widget is the formatter, which controls how that field is rendered. Um, so if you have a date field, your widget is probably gonna be like a calendar picker, um, but then how does that render? Does that render as just a Unix timestamp, or does that render as sort of uh, year slash month slash day, or does it 
expanded out into the full string. So you pick how that field renders with the formatter. Oh. Okay. So that's how we add con or that's how we add the, the bits of the chunks of things to our content. Um, when we're still configuring the different kinds of content, we serve sort of two way two different there, well. We have two different screens for uh, how we sort of set up the content for people to use. Uh, we have forms and we have displays. Forms are where we control how that somebody creates this content. And then displays are, is where we control how that content is rendered when somebody's looking at the content. So I think that's it. And let's, let's go and look at some stuff. Because all that, all that is pretty useless if you don't know what it looks like. Um, okay, so back to the site. So we'll take a look at, this is just the standard install of Drupal. Uh, for anyone who hasn't seen it, if you want to create content, you can click on content and go to add content. And then Drupal offers you a list of all the different content types that have been created in this site. Um, in standard, there's something called article and there's something called basic page. And if you click on those, you get the form to create an article, and because I'm logged in as the administrator, I see every single option, so it's, uh, it's slightly more confusing. Uh, ideally, when you deploy an application for someone, or, I, or if you're just using Drupal, uh, whoever deployed it for you has set your permissions so that this form is streamlined. Well, let's take a look at creating a content type and how we do that. So that's going to be under structure because we're changing the structure of how content is stored. And then we go to content types. And then we have a list again of all the content types. So why don't we create a new one? So we're creating a content type for a, an event. Uh, we'll just get lazy and not uh, add any help text to it. But uh, so we can save that. And now we can manage fields. So by default, because this is a node, it automatically creates a, a body field for us that is um, just a, a big box of text. But for an event, we need more to collect more information than this. So specific information about, uh, so click add field, and we'd like a date field. Date of event. So an event only will only have one date in this content management system. So we'll save this. Uh, we can set up help text. We can say that this is a required field because it should be on an event. Uh, and then we'll just default it to the current date. All right, so now we have an event. It has an event content type. It has a block of text. Uh, and a date. If we go into content and add content, now we have an event that we can create. And if we go to it, we have title, we have block of text, and then we have a date of our event. All right. So if we go back to the content type, we, uh, where we're managing the content type, we have extra tabs for uh, form and then for the display. So as we talked about before, form is where you control how the edit of this looks like. So here are all the different fields that are, that are displayed to you when you're editing. There's a lot of them. So uh, here's the date of event so we can control how that looks. The, well, I should have used some fields that had better op widget options than this. But uh, this is where we can control this. But for the moment, we can just, we'll just change the order of things. We want to ask for the date first. We just want to get rid of all this stuff because it's just confusing. There we are. Disable that. So I have a title, I have a date, and I have a body. Save this. Now if we look at the event form again, um, we've, it's removed all those things and changed the order. So this is how we can control how people put in uh, this, this information. Create a date. Oh, good. I set it for today. Oh, 
All right, so we've created a piece of content. Um, it has the title, there's the camp bottom that we created, the body text, hello world, and the date of the event. And so we can, can if we don't like this, we can change the display um, of this, and we'll say we want the date first. Um, I think the date is obvious, so we don't need to have, we'll just visually hide the, the date. We can change the format that it's rendered to. Um, we're going to always override the time zone because it's in Ottawa. Always show local time. And then let's, uh, let's expand this out. We'll save that and then... So, we've changed the structure for how things look. So this is the basics of sort of setting up content management in Drupal and content management so this, this setting up a, co a content management system for whatever your needs are uh, in Drupal. So we're, uh, we're nearly out of time because the conference is going to get started soon. But does anyone have any questions? I think it covered a lot really, really fast. So here. Do you know the place where there's online tutorials? Yes, I was totally going to talk about online tutorials. Um, so we actually have, uh, there's, and uh, it's what's going to be announced, and I'll st I guess I'm going to steal Danielle's thunder a little, uh, is there's uh, a bingo game that's going to happen, and some of the prizes are uh, subscriptions to a site called Drupalize Me. So Drupalize Me is a, is a really great site for, uh, how do you spell that, Drupalize Me? It's a really great site that does um, video tutorials um, and online courses on how to use Drupal. So I gotta click it harder apparently. All right, Google, am I gonna, there we are. So it's drupalize.me. Um, they have a lot of free, I think they have some free, they have a lot of free videos, but you can get, um, you can, I don't think it's too expensive and then you have, they have a huge database of, of online courses and videos that you can watch to, to learn how to do um, a lot of different things in Drupal. So that's, that's sort of a good one. Um, yeah. There's another one that I just went through called Drupal Tutor. Drupal Tutor? I don't know that one. Um, I'll try it out. But I'm not a tutor. Oh, that is totally not how you spell that word. Is this the one? Was it good? Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> I mean, it's a good beginner thing. OK. Uh, it looks like there's a bunch of development stuff here. So yeah, if you want to get into Drupal development for Drupal 8, this looks like there's some good ones. Well, building websites with Drupal 8. Yeah, I mean, that one, uh, there was a free one, so um, that you had to sort of set up a user account. Oh, OK. DrupalTutor.com. OK. So they so have like a free 16-class uh, um, you know, module. And yeah. Okay, so cool. That's another one. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. There, there's, us, there's usually a lot of good blog posts for how to do a lot of different basic things in Drupal too. So uh, if you do a Google search, um, you, you, it's, it's actually usually pretty good at finding how to do things. Um, though if you're going to do Drupal eight things, make sure you Google for Drupal eight because otherwise it'll find. It'll pull, Google will pull something out of its massive database of Drupal 7 things. And so if you're just doing stuff in the UI, it's pretty similar. But if you're doing any kind of development, it's totally different. So any other questions? All right, well, I think we'll, uh, we'll leave it there. Well, thank you, thank you very much.